Hey guys, thanks for clicking. In this video, uh, we're all cooling system on this bike. I'm gonna run you through everything we've done cooling system wise, uh, as far as components, the thought process, and controlling it for this uh, C, uh, the GL650 engine that we have swapped in here. So it should be a lot of information. All of the products and parts that I've used are gonna be linked in the description below like every video. So uh, yeah, if you haven't already, hit subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. And then also look me up on socials. You can actually uh, get an inside look at this bike. You know, you see the wiring here and stuff like that before the videos come out. So you see a little bit more advanced as far as what we're doing. Anyway, yeah, this is going to be a good one. Enjoy the video. So the radiator itself has actually been rebuilt. I found an old school radiator shop and uh, decided to take it to them after I was looking in through some of these, uh, through some of the coolant tubes, uh, passages through the radiator, and noticed there was like some of the copper material that you would see with like a head gasket sealant that you would buy in a bottle, like you know O'Reilly's or Napa or whatever. So I felt more comfortable in having it fully disassembled, meaning they desolder the the sides and the core and clean all those individual tubes out manually and strip everything down. So I didn't, I just, I had a feeling that there could have been the potential for a block passage and that's something that we just don't want. If we're going this far, again, we're going that far. So disassembled and then uh, fully cleaned, reassembled, re-soldered and then freshly painted and it is literally good as new. So these hoses actually come from Samco. I picked them up through Dime City Cycles. It's the only place I could find that supplied them. 
And these are a silicone hose versus a traditional rubber, so they should last a lot longer and they should stay their, they should stay their shape even better too. And then these are also the Samco brand um, uh, hose clamps. They actually have more of a, a solid type, type uh, process on them. It's, you know what I'm talking about. The other, the, the generic hose clamps have a bunch of ridges in them where the worm gear screws into there. But these are designed not to cut into the hose. So I know that's a small detail and probably not absolutely necessary, but if we're going this far, we're going this far. So how you do anything is how you do everything. So we're doing everything. So yeah. For the fan itself, you saw that I have a Bandit 1250 fan. It's a very large, I think, seven inch diameter fan, but uh, I wanted something to use as much of the CX500 real estate as I could, so that's why I chose that particular fan versus say like a, a Ninja or the Ducati fan that I had originally tried out, which now actually resides on the KLR. So that was pretty cool. But anyway, the fans all mounted with just some stainless hardware here. Uh, and then the radiator itself is mounted with the stock rubber bushings just cleaned up and mounted on the bike. Simple. So the thermostat we're using is just a basic Duralast Gold. I'll put the part number below. But um, I had seen some fitment issues with a, a Napa unit that I tried. It was a, a height wise interfering with the, the cap itself. But regardless, I went with 180 degree, which is a stock temperature, and that's because you actually need the engine and the engine oil to get up to enough temperature to burn off any of the moisture that could potentially be in it. And uh, that's really important for longevity of the engine. Some of you will note that I do not have an expansion tank on this thing or an overflow bottle. I do plan to actually fabricate one. I actually, uh, it's, it's, it's on the list. I really need to do that. but. My plans so far are just to grab some uh, some aluminum pipe and then fabricate a cylinder to sit right here. I've seen some of those online. They look really good and it's a nice clean thing and it'll give me an opportunity to further fabricate and use the TIG. So I like practicing and that's just a great excuse to do so. But that's gonna be a simple little thing instead of running a hose all the way along the bike and snaking something down here. That's gonna free up some space and it'll just be a trick little piece that I uh, get excited to make. So if you guys have been sticking around for a while and you've seen some of the earlier videos, you've likely seen a couple videos where I mentioned using the uh, NWT Morty system. And this is gonna be controlling uh, basically the electrical system on the bike. It's a power distribution module. Um, and that's awesome, but I still needed a product for the, the fan. So if you saw the past video, linked above, the fan actually has an amp spike when it first spins up and it was like up to maybe like 15 amps or something like that and that's just not suitable so I had been searching and searching and searching for a controller for that thing to help um, to help tame that and what I was looking for was a, a PWM based system so pulse width modulation and actually from NWT they had something on the shelf this is the Becky unit and this is just for, um, I mean, it's for miscellaneous electrical components, anything you really want to wire to it. But it has like a PWM feature built in. So basically it's going to ramp voltage up. It's going to kind of bump it. So it'll like bump the fan voltage and spin it up over the course of a second. And what that's going to do is enable the, the, the initial current in rush to just be brought back down. And so it'll just be like a maintained kind of current. So whereas the fan, when it's running is like seven amps, well, we probably won't ever surpass that. And that's gonna be awesome because that's gonna just ease everything on the charging system side and hopefully not create any, you know, uh, weird electrical gremlins when the, uh, when the fan spins up and just draw power from something else. So yeah, we're gonna wire this in. This is gonna be the main controller for the fan. And then the, uh, the Morty system is gonna control uh, all the other accessories on the bike. But you'll see that in, um, I'm gonna break it down in a lot of like more in-depth electrical videos. I'll probably do like a three-part series on wiring the bike in general. And uh, we'll get a better look at it there. I'll go through the products and uh, the uh, information on that. So yeah, this was definitely very, very needed. So I was very happy that they, uh, they reached out and said that they had something for me on that one. So yeah, 
gonna wire it up and we'll uh All right, so if you haven't already figured it out, this is actually a ground type switch. And what this does is it's gonna sense at the bottom of the radiator what our coolant temperature is. And when it reaches a certain threshold, in this case, I believe it's uh, uh, 190, it's gonna go ahead and create a path from this lug to ground. And what that does is that'll send the signal to the, uh, the Becky unit to kick the fan on. And it's already receiving its own power as, a, as an independent system. So once this thing switches to ground, then that's gonna be our signal to actually turn our fan on. Whereas the sensor that's up in the stock thermostat location, that's actually just for our gauge. So there actually will be a slight variance between top and bottom of the radiator as far as overall coolant temperature, but that's okay because you know I, I have multiple, or multiple versions of this and I can kind of dial in where I want that fan to turn on and off at. And uh, the reason I did it this way, uh, this is actually just a complete bolt-in thing, obviously, except for, you know, modifying the fittings just a little bit, which I didn't feel was too extreme. But I wanted this to be more of a, a bolt-in solution for you guys because I've seen, you know, I've seen people, oh, like JB Welding fittings to the radiators and I just, I don't really like that. I think this is clean, I think it's simple, and the sensors are cheap, and, and I think it's just going to be a better system overall. So I'm happy with that, and hopefully this will, uh, hopefully this will be a, a good, simple solution for this. So to monitor all of this cooling stuff, we actually have our Coso digital gauge here that we're tapped into, and this is a nice compact. I think it's a DB02R unit but it has all the features I want and basically none that I don't. I didn't want it to be overly complicated or clutter, cluttered. So we actually have two temperature inputs here and then we have our warning lights across the top. So we'll have, um, we'll, we'll put in a, a threshold where a light will flash if it's too hot or something like that. And that can be on either the oil or the uh, coolant. So we have temp A, temp B, we have a speed sensor. Uh, we should be able to have an ambient air temperature in here. And then there's gonna be some other various things. So obviously we'll have our tachometer and our speedo, which I've mentioned, but this is gonna be a pretty cool little, pretty cool little setup. I guess since we're talking cooling system, we can ultimately talk about the head gaskets here. Now, um, if you've been watching, you know I recently did the full engine rebuild top to bottom. And on the assembly videos, I, uh, I just briefly went over the head gaskets. They're actually an Athena brand I found, and I did copper coat them. I have, uh, I've actually been getting a lot of questions about that particular spray. Now, I am no expert on this, and like I've said in other videos, if I use it, some people are gonna be like, you shouldn't have used it, and if I didn't use it, people are gonna be like, you should have used it. But anyway, it's a Permatex 80697, just copper spray gasket but meant for a high temp, a high temp scenario such as a head gasket. But I figure if I'm doing it once, I just want to do it once and I'll just spray it and uh, we'll go from there. So hopefully they won't leak. But yeah, that about wraps up the entire cooling system, all the components on the bike and this thing should be pretty rad. So I'm excited about it. All right, that about does it. So again, just did a wrap up of the cooling system. I wanted to showcase everything that I've done to hopefully answer some questions that you guys might have had or any concerns that you have maybe when building your bike. A lot of the stuff is actually uh, just ideas you can use on any bike that is, or car, or, or whatever you're trying to keep cool. But yeah, I wanted to try to make a clean, almost bolt-on or at least not like overly overly complicated fabrication or, or extravagant components i wanted to try to make a nice durable um available system that anybody can try to put together so hopefully this stuff uh hopefully this stuff works out and works for you guys you know like the temperature switch being on or the fan switch being on the bottom of the radiator in a almost bolt-in fashion or the, uh, the, the modification to the uh, temp sensor here, to the factory one, to tap into a new gauge, just things like that. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, definitely hit me up in the comments. Um, 
uh, definitely refer to maybe the older videos I've posted and then definitely check out the links I've put below and then if all the answers aren't in there definitely ask me a question and I'll try to get back to it as soon as I can but until next time uh, I appreciate you guys watching and definitely uh, definitely subscribe like and then uh, hit up the socials and, and keep track of me there I don't seem to sleep so anyway one more thing, if you like these hats, or if you want a Brick House Build shirt, which I'm not currently sporting, but if you want to see any of that stuff, head over to my website, BrickHouseBuilds.com, and grab one for you, and you guys can represent, and it would mean a great deal to me. So, anyway, the next video you'll see is uh, probably going to be maybe a little bit of the wiring. You'll see, I'm going to break that up into a few sections and make it very detailed, just like this video. So anyway. Again, I appreciate you guys watching, and I'll see you next time.